Oh no, not another bloody handheld system from China. Well, before you switch off, let me tell you that this one is actually pretty good. This is the PAP, K <laughs> PAP. Oh man, this is the PAP K3 Plus. And the reason this is very good is because this is not made for the Asian market. It was actually designed for the European market. And that also explains why the box is not bashed to hell. This actually came from Denmark, believe it or not. But yeah, it is a Chinese product. On the side, we've got some English. And yes, that's English, not English. Although I do question the 64-bit operating system. And on the other side, we've got a list of what's actually in the box. A console, AV cable, USB cable, AC adapter, and user's manual. Well, actually, um, there was actually more than that in the box. So let's take a look and see what we got. Okay, so first thing I noticed in the box was this. I'm not joking, this was in the box. A bloody pop station. A little tiny Tetris thing. Yeah, so that was in the box. And then, there was this. Some cat bookmarks. I, I shit you not, these were in the box. Okay, and of course we got the European power adapter. Which is, you know, typical USB input there. And we got the um, AV cable out. And the USB adapter with a, a mini USB port on this side. And a standard USB port on that side. And of course we got the console itself. And this is the console. Now build quality of this console is actually very good. It's not creaky. It's not, uh, you know bendy and feel cheap or whatever it is very well made and the screen is pretty big this little thumb knob thing here is really accurate it works very well these buttons feel good these buttons are a little bit clicky but they're only the volume st uh, select and start buttons and this d-pad even though it's just a load of buttons does actually function quite well except for fighting games when you want to play a fighting game best using this little analog stick here on the top of the machine, we've got the trigger buttons, a reset button, a power button, the mini USB in, a headphone out, and also the TV out, and the micro USB slot. The back of the machine, really bad camera, we'll be taking a look at that later on. And inside the flap, we have the battery. And as you can see, it's a 1200 milliamp battery at 3.7 volts. So let's power on the machine. So here we go. As you can see, it starts up with Super Game. And we get a menu interface, which is kind of similar to what we've seen before. These up here are preset games. And down here, we've got various different options which we can access. Now I'm gonna connect this to the TV now, so you can see what it actually looks like through the TV out. But don't worry, when we come to playing the games, we'll go straight back to this screen. So first, let's take a look at the options. First one we get to is the language select option. And as you can see, there's a lot of languages provided there. We can also change the background image used for the wallpaper. There's a few built-in ones there, which are not too bad, but you can add more yourself. Quite an unusual option here, you can actually change the color of the font. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but it's there if you want to. And we can also see how much internal storage this machine has. TV out mode to let you choose between PAL and NTSC. And there are a few other options there as well. This little option here lets you uh, read various different formats as digital ebooks. There's a test document installed into the machine and as you can see it's not installed very well because the pictures don't work. You can also check out some JPEGs or pictures that you've taken with the camera which are really bad so I'm not even going to bother showing you. But one good thing about uh, this uh, selection here is you can actually use the pictures as uh, the background wallpaper on the actual machine. The device also comes in with some built-in videos now these are just a standard definition. So I wanted to see if it would actually play high definition because normally these handheld devices don't play high definition video. So I'll put a couple of videos onto the SD card and as you can see, this uh, 
copy of Top of the Pops that was broadcasted on TV uh, last uh, last week. Actually, I think it was on there Wednesday. Yeah, it's a rerun from 1984, by the way. But yeah, this is in HD and it seems to be working absolutely perfectly fine. Unfortunately, the controls for the video are not that good. You can't really uh, do much with it apart from fast forward it and uh, skip to the next uh, video. And as you can see, here's uh, Celebrity Juice. This was also uh, 720p, so this is HD as well. And uh, one thing, when you uh, first play a video, the colors are kind of messed up when you put HD video on, as you can see here. But uh, if you leave it running for a couple of seconds, it does fix itself. So yeah, this machine seems to run HD video just fine. No problems at all. Well, apart from the odd color glitching. Now what we want to do is see the games. Now what I really like about this machine is the way they have little icons for each format which it supports and as you can see it supports a lot of formats. So let's take a look at the actual machine running the games through the camera. Now the first thing I want to show you is what it's like when you're playing games in Tate mode or vertical mode. You can actually have it filling up the whole screen vertically. It's really really good. And as you can see the screen looks pretty sharp as well. And I've got the sound being captured directly so you can hear the actual quality of the emulation sound. Now the CPS One games are not in stereo, uh, well at least this one's not in stereo, but all the other games are in stereo. But as you can see the pitch quality is pretty nice. And playing marks like this works really well. Unfortunately, because uh, I'm actually looking at this through the viewfinder, it's kind of awkward to get to the buttons. Hence the strange hand positions. So let's check out another game running on the Capcom CPS system. Unfortunately, the CPS2 games are stretched to a 16x9 and the option to change them back into 4x3 doesn't really work. All it does is make the screen a lot smaller but it's still in 16x9 so it's kind of useless. But this doesn't look too bad I guess. And the distortion that you can hear is basically on the game. This game is very loud. It's like this on the Dreamcast as well. Okay, this is a CPS2 game, this is Darkstalkers. And I'm playing with the uh, little thumbstick here, and it works really well for pulling out special moves onto the fighters. Unfortunately, as I said, I'm looking at this through the viewfinder, so it's not very easy to play. Now the machine does offer save states. As you can see right now, I saved the state on Street Fighter Z03 before, so I just go into the menu and select load, not save, and I can jump straight to that save point. So you can play battery backup games on this, no problem at all. Unfortunately, when I plug this machine into my computer, it didn't come up as anything. So either the USB cable they provide doesn't have the data line on it, or the machine itself doesn't have a data line on it. So as far as I'm aware, the only way to add new ROMs are basically by sticking them on the uh, SD card. But surely you must be able to access the internal memory. So we're taking a look at some Neo Geo stuff here, and as you can see, it runs perfectly. Although I do think the sound is a little bit scratchy. Okay, 
is check out one more Neo Geo game. This is Art of Fighting 2. So you can reconfigure all the buttons as well and I think uh, you really should do that because the default setup is not very good at all. In fact I should have uh, remapped the buttons before attempting to make this video. Oh well. Here we go taking a look at some Game Boy Advance games. This is a uh, Mario Kart, as if you didn't know. And uh, yeah, it seems to be running just fine. Again the sound is a little bit scratchy but then again a real Game Boy Advance also has scratchy sound. So maybe this is how it's meant to sound, I don't know. Yep, Yoshi's Island here. Seems to be running just fine. And the best thing with Game Boy Advance games is that they were meant to be widescreen in the first place. So they look pretty good on this screen. And here we go taking a look at the Super Famicom or SNES or SNES or Super Nintendo, whatever you want to call it. Now unfortunately you can definitely tell that the sound emulation on this machine is not very good. But the speed is working just fine. And this emulator will allow you to play the games in 4x3 mode. And uh, let's just uh, show you what it looks like when you fill up the screen. It's uh, quite ugly actually. Yeah, look at that. It's all squashed. But will this emulator run FX2 games or Super FX2 games? Well, here we go with Doom and as you can see, it's running it, but uh, <laughs> it's definitely not playable. Okay, well, maybe it will work. Super FX games, you know, regular like Star Fox. Um, yeah, maybe not. Now you gotta give a little bit of credit because normally these devices don't even boot up Super FX games. At least this device does boot them up, but uh, as you can clearly see, it doesn't run them very well at all. Pretty much unplayable. But luckily 2D games work just fine. Okay, and here we are taking a look at Mega Drive. Again, this machine will allow you to do it in 4x3 mode. This is Aero Blasters and it seems to be running perfectly and sounds perfectly fine too. But what we gotta do is play a Mega Drive game, which usually sounds pretty bad on these type of machines. Yep, that's right, Burnacle 2 or Streets of Age 2. So um, I'm gonna be quiet and let you hear it, but uh, to me it sounds pretty good. Maybe not 100% perfect, but uh, good enough. we've got to do haven't we let's check out virtual racing see if that works normally that just boots up to a black screen well what do you know we can actually see the menus can we play the game though um, yeah no <laughs> oh well I gotta tell you what I wonder if I can drive around the track just using the map let's give it a try 
get around the first corner, that's an achievement. Yeah, I think I've crushed. Yeah, but oh no, I'm going again. Oh yeah, result. So let's take a look at some Famicom or NES games. This is a Super Mario Bros. 3 and again the speed seems perfectly fine but to me the sound doesn't sound as it should. Here we go with Game Boy Color. This sounds pretty bad as well, very scratchy. Nope, uh, Tiny Toons here also seems pretty scratchy as well. So definitely an emulation is issue. taking a look at some mass system games this is Alex Kidd in Shinobi World quite unusual for these clones to run mass system games and here we go with Wonderboy 4 as you can see it runs mass system games absolutely flawlessly unfortunately there's no support for the FM sound And since it plays Master System games, of course it's going to play Game Gear games as well. Unfortunately the machine doesn't come with many Game Gear games built in. And finally we've got Game Boy. Just like Game Boy Color emulation, the sound is very scratchy. But at least it looks pretty good and runs at the right speed. As well as these items here, we also got some other stuff in the box which I completely forgot to show you before. First up is this Wario Land, the shape dimension case to put your little console in. It's fairly well padded and inside it's pretty padded uh, as well so that's not bad at all. Pretty good. Nice little extra there. And we also got an instruction manual which I forgot to show you. It folds out into a nice big poster size. And the English on it is pretty good. I mean, can't really complain at the English, to be honest. It's not bad at all. And also, there was this Dear Buyer card here. Thanks for your order when you receive the package, which has any problems. Don't give one star. Please contact customer service. Well, okay, we will do. Now, something that we don't really do on this show, but we're going to do it this time. Let's take it apart. Because this machine is kind of interesting, it's not a bad bit of hardware. So I'd like to see what is actually running behind this machine. Let's open it up. So here we go taking a look inside of the machine and straight away we can see that it's got an Ingenix CPU. This is the JZ4760 that was released in 2010. But don't worry because it does run at a pretty reasonable 600 megahertz and it does have a 720p video processing unit. Next to that we got a Samsung memory module of 512 megabyte, and over here we got the 4GB microSD card 
which is being glued into place and I can't take it out. Here we got the microphone for use with the video camera and the headphone TV out. And we've got this little thing over here which I thought was like some sort of Wi-Fi module but uh, to be honest I'm not sure what it is. So there we have it, that is the PAP K3S as it's called on the logic board. I'm pretty impressed with this machine, it only cost about 7,000 yen shipped, it plays the CPS2 games perfectly well, Neo Geo games run perfectly well as well, in fact all the games seem to run at the correct speed, just that some of them have some slight sound issues. Now as long as the clone manufacturers in China keep stepping up their games to this type of level and beyond, we should be seeing some quality stuff in the future. But uh, I think they'd probably rather go the cheap route and make crap as cheap as possible, so... Uh, Oh well, fingers crossed anyway.